Now let's shift our attention to data serialization and I'm also gonna provide a quick overview of JSON. So what is data serialization? Let me explain. So we have a data object. Typically that's complex data. And the idea of data serialization is we wanna take that data object uh, that we have stored on our computer and we wanna convert it into a stream of bytes. And why would we wanna convert that object into a stream of bytes? Well, we wanna allow that data to be stored and transferred and distributed, right? So this is where file database memory comes in. And then from those resources, we take that stream of bytes and we convert it back into an object on the destination end. This entire path from left to right is called data serialization. So let me give you an official definition of data serialization. It's a process of converting complex data into a byte stream for storage, transfer, and distribution purposes on physical devices. So if you think about it, guys, different computer systems and environments have their own proprietary data format. So if you look at Microsoft Windows, it has its own proprietary stuff. And if you look at Apple Macintosh, it has its own proprietary stuff. And if you look at Linux, it's got its own stuff. And how do we allow the data to be able to talk to each other and these different systems to be able to understand the different type of files and data objects? Well, that's where data serialization comes into play. And what it does is it turns a traditional proprietary data format on its head by storing and exchanging data into a standard format that is platform and language neutral and can be understood universally. So in other words, the stream of bytes has to be standardized format and that's what allows us to make this data portable. So as you go from Microsoft Windows to Linux to, to Mac, you have this consistent standardized data set that looks the same and functions the same. And a couple of ter additional terms that are related to data serialization, there's a term called deserialization. And it's the opposite of serialization. So here what we're doing is we're creating an object from a stream of bytes. And some additional terms as you read through different text, different books, you're gonna come across could potentially be data serialization language. It's also known as data modeling language. And by the way, JSON belongs to a standardized format. So does XML. But today I'm gonna to focus in on the JSON format which is a data serialization format. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's one of the most popular data formats for dealing with web APIs because first, it's an IETF standard defined in RFC 8259, which makes it widely adopted globally because it's an open standard. It's human readable, which makes it very easy to understand and learn. It requires less coding, which means you don't have to be an expert software developer to write JSON scripts. And JSON processes faster on machines. So whether you're using a $10,000 desktop machine versus a $500 cell phone, it's going to get processed very fast and very efficiently. REST or RESTful APIs mostly use JSON and that's what makes JSON so popular as well. And to understand JSON, the big thing with understanding any data format is to understand the different data types that are supported by it. So if you guys have any software development background, you will understand what the different data types mean. And even if you don't, just hang in there with me, you'll get it as I go into the detail. So the first type is string, seconds, number, boolean, null, object, and array. These are the six data types that JSON supports. And before I get 
into the data types, let's quickly look at Ferrari Enzo. And one thing I want you guys to familiarize yourself with is there's this whole idea in JSON called key value pair. So here we're saying who is the manufacturer or the maker of this car? Well, obviously it's Ferrari. So what I'm saying is this is the key and this is the value. Like I said, it's the key value pair idea. Well, what's the model? It's an Enzo. What year? 2004. Color? Red? Price? Forget about it. <laughs> um, because it is very ridiculously priced. As a matter of fact, quick tidbit, Ferrari only produced Enzo between 2001 and 2004. And there's only a handful of these globally. And they're only appreciating in value more than real, real estate. I think the last one sold in an auction was 3.6 or 3.8 million dollars or some ridiculous number like that. But that's not the point. I digress. The point is that we have this key value pair idea in JSON. So maker would become a key. Ferrari would become a value. Model would become a key. Enzo would become a value. Year would become a key. 2004 would be a value. Color would become a key. Red will become a value, so on and so forth. You get the idea. And this is what the entire structure is based around when you learn JSON. Once you get this idea in your head, the rest is simple. But this is the big idea, key value pair. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.